How's it going guys, Jake here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Extra Extra Planets mod, or basically the Ultimate Planets mod in Galacticraft, as it is the latest add-on in the Galacticraft series of mods. And there are so many things to go over, of new blocks, machines, planets, and rockets, and there's even more in the making, like new galaxies, which is going to be super cool to see when it comes out. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to go over in this mod or let you know is that I'm not going to be going over every single thing. There are some things that are very easy to understand, all that. But I'm also not going to be going over to every single planet. I'm just going to be showing a few, some of the complex ones, just giving you a taste of what they're like. Because the experience of exploring the planet for the first time and spending all the work to get there is definitely worth it. So I don't want to spoil all that for you. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the main stuff. So the first thing I'm going to be going over are the planets and just basically the stuff that's on them. Uh, mainly including rocks and things you can build with those and just showing the color, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But some of these things like the ores that are on each planet, I will go into a little bit more detail just because those are going to be uh, very important later on. So starting in this first chest, you can see that there are a lot of variations for blocks. Some of them look really cool like this purple and this blue. And I first want to start off by saying that on every single planet in Moon, there is iron, tin, and copper. And I just have a few examples up here. So you can see on Mercury, there are those three. On Neptune, there are those three. And on Saturn, there are those three. Now, all these blocks in front of you, there are three types of stone on a planet or a moon. You've got the surface rock, the subsurface rock, and then it's stone. And then on some planets, you have these different types of gravel. Now, on this side, these are the main planets. You have Mercury, Ceres, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. All these are different moons that will go to each of these different planets. So you can see that there's just a wide variety of blocks you can use and colored blocks you can use uh, just for any decoration when you get this. Some of these things you will have to use in crafting recipes, but this is just a quick overview of what the colors basically in the galaxy are. So in this next chest, this is where the ores really start to kick up. Now, if you see a pickaxe and a chest plate next to that ore in the same line that is, uh, it means that you can make both a full set of armor and tools with that particular ore. Now, on Mercury, you'll find not only the basic copper, tin, and aluminum that I already went over, but you're going to find Mercury and carbon on the planet Mercury. Now, you can find carbon on a few other planets, I think Jupiter as well. And now, both these have their own ingots, their own blocks that you can make out of them, and as I said before, their sets of armor and tools. Now, on Ceres, you have uranium ore. This is used for several different things, and I'll get that later. Same with Jupiter. Now, Jupiter, we have three different types of ores. We have nickel, palladium, and red gem ore. Now, these are things you use later as well. These are just the basic things you can use without getting into uh, too much advanced stuff in the mod. Then on Saturn, we have a magnesium ore, and on Uranus, we have a crystal and a white gem ore. On Neptune, we have zinc and a blue gem ore, and this is very interesting. It kind of looks like a diamond, but there is a slight difference. Uh, then on Pluto, we have tungsten ore, and on Eris, we have dark iron ore, and I believe on Eris as well, we have lead. Lead, I think you just find kind of randomly. Then on one of the moons of Callisto, you will find drilled oil as well. Now, I don't think this has a purpose in the mod just yet, but there are several other things that they're going to add on later. Then we have a volcanic rock, as I said, this is found on Jupiter and Io. Then you have ash blocks, you can harvest from those as well, and you have volcanic ingots. Now, there's a whole list of things right here, and these are the stone bricks that you can make with each planet. Now, to make this, it's very simple. You just take the stone, which is the third deepest uh, type of stone that you'll find on the planet, put it as such, and you'll get the stone bricks, just as usual with cobblestone or whatever. And now, you have all the different types, so this is just showing like the color variation, like I think this blue looks really cool, but you've got to go to Uranus and Neptune to find that. And then, uh, you also have some orange sand. It's just a, another kind of random block you'll find out there. Now, a frozen nitrogen, now you, I'll get to nitrogen and all that stuff later, but this, well, when you make it frozen, it'll just allow you to make these really cool uh, looking bricks. So that's the main thing that you use frozen nitrogen for. Then you'll find some interesting things, like on Saturn, you'll find infected stone, uh, broken as it says, and then pure infected stone, and then you have some slime ore on Saturn as well. So just a bunch of random things that you're going to find. Now in this next chest, it has, uh, as you can see, a bunch of stairs, and that's because it's kind of a similar thing as the previous chest. You can make all these different types of stairs uh, from these different planets as they have their own stones. So it's the same thing, you take whatever type of stone you're wanting that stair to be, subsurface or stone, or take the stone bricks, whatever. Uh, just a bunch of different types of colors, tones, so use them however you want. 
And now, over here we have a little bit more important stuff. We have the dungeon items. Now, on this side, these are the different colored dungeon bricks that you'll see uh, on those dungeons, as you can see all the different planets. Uh, then on each of those planets, like on Mercury, you have a tier 4, and you have tier 4 dungeon key when you kill the boss. And whenever you kill the main boss, you'll get the key to unlock the big chest. And so now Eris, which is one of the farthest planets away, does have the biggest chest, which is the tier 10. Now right below that, you can see we have these iron apples and these diamond apples. Now as you can figure, uh, iron apples have a little bit weaker effect than gold apples, and diamonds have a little bit uh, greater of an effect than the golden apples. Now to make the iron, it's the same thing you do to make a golden apple. You just surround it by iron ingots, or if you want the special one, it has to be blocks. Same thing with diamond, so as you can see, it is pretty freaking expensive. And now moving on to our last chest, and now as you can just kind of blown away by the amount of colors that there are here, and this is all from one planet. It's a very special planet, and that's one of the ones that I'm going to show you. Now, I just kind of have it set up like this because in the planet, and I'll show you this as I said later, that there are kind of different color zones that you will go and explore. So in one color zone, you'll have red everything, and you can grow this back on Earth. You'll have red diamond ore, which then you can make your own set of armor and tools with and in this place you have some red sand and grass as well and then you have their own type of sticks if you use that type of wood you'll get that color stick so it's just a kind of cool color variation there isn't that much different all these gems have like the same durability and such now also on Kepler I'll note that you have to find uh, or that you'll be able to find platinum ore and it has its own ingot and a block of platinum now you can't make a set of armor uh, with this or tools but you are going to need this for some advanced stuff and then on top of that, you have the basic iron ore, tin ore, and copper ore that I went before, and its own cobblestone. And then it has dense coal ore for when you need a lot of coal. And now if you use the basic brown wood you find there, it makes brown sticks, it doesn't make normal sticks, so those won't stack uh, just with regular sticks that you get on this type of, uh, on the overworld. Now next we have the oxygen tanks. Now this looks like a lot at first glance, but it's really not. It just adds a bunch of different colors to the main oxygen tanks. Because you already had light, medium, and heavy oxygen tanks when you, just in the base mod. So this adds a whole variety of colors instead of just uh, a few different colors that the original mod added, if any. And it also adds two new types of uh, tanks, and these do not have different colors, and that is the very heavy auction tank and the extremely heavy auction tank. Now you can see the auction time remaining difference in between those and the heavy is going down. So this is 10 times as large as the light auction tank. And so you'll need this for different things to craft mainly kits, which I'm gonna get to in just a second. But uh, yeah, if you need more auction, there you go. And the next thing I'm going over are kits. Now, these are pretty complex, but once you understand them, they are very simple. It's basically just to save space in a bunch of different ways. So you have six different types of kits. You have the full kit, the basic kit, the full kit without oxygen, the full kit without thermal protection, the oxygen kit, and the protection kit. Now, if you're gonna make uh, almost any different type of kit, you're gonna need to make this protection kit first. And to make this, you're just gonna take thermal armor and put it uh, in a crafting table as such to get this tier one protection kit because this is tier one thermal uh, armor. And I'll get to this armor in just a second. Now, for all the different tiers, all you're gonna be doing is taking the thermal kit up a notch and adding you know, a few things here and there. This is tier two, this is tier three, and I'll get to these things in just a second. And for these different kits, the only thing you're gonna be changing in them to upgrade the tier are the oxygen tank sizes. So that's where the very uh, large and the extremely large oxygen tanks come into play. So as you can see here, you have the basic uh, survival things that I already went over in my previous Galactraft mods, and you'll have this oxygen tank with that protection kit that I talked about before. So if you're gonna make tier two of that, all you need to do is upgrade those to medium oxygen tanks. Editing Jake here, I just forgot to mention that not only are you upgrading the oxygen tanks, you're also upgrading to whatever tier you're making that protection kit if it is required in the recipe as uh, you can see here. So I just wanted to say that to avoid any confusion and then heavy, and then very heavy, and then extremely heavy. So that's for a full kit. Now a full kit covers everything you need. It covers your oxygen mask, your oxygen system, uh, thermal protection, all that stuff. Then you have a basic setup, which is only the oxygen and like the survival ability of the parachute and stuff. Now this does not have the thermal protection. As you can see, the protection kit is not at the bottom. So this is very easy to make. And now to upgrade, uh, upgrade the tier, all you need to do is change those oxygen tanks as I talked about before. 
Now the full kit without oxygen, this you'll take those thermal protections, that parachute and the frequency module because it allows you to hear things on the different planets as I talked about before in my previous mod reviews. So this does not have oxygen in it, so it's just a different variation, different storage, however you want to use it. And then to upgrade it, you're just going to need to take a, a higher tier of thermal protection. And when you go to tier 2 and all the thermal protection things, you're going to need this uh, shield controller, which I'll get to later. And then full kit without thermal protection, it's kind of as it states, it doesn't have the thermal protection, so it's not going to have that uh, little uh, chest down in the bottom or the different protection kit. So it's the same thing to upgrade it, you just need the medium or larger oxygen tanks. Then we have the oxygen kit, which is, well, just oxygen, no thermal protection parachutes or anything like that. So upgrade it again, all you need are the oxygen tanks, different ones. So that's basically it for the kits. So the full kit is if you're going to be completely decked out except for a spacesuit, and that's a very expensive type of armor. I'll get to that in just a second. And it makes it very handy for you to be able to put on any types of armor just all at once. And the next thing I'm going over are the rockets. Now there are several different types of rockets. There's tier 4 through 10. The original mod added uh, just tier 1. Then the extra planets mod, or just the planets mod, added uh, tier 2 and tier 3. So this goes from 4 to 10. Now these rockets do look pretty cool and are much larger than before. And now I want to start off by saying that this is just basically how you're going to make a rocket. You're going to have the nose cone, the engine, the four fins, the boosters, and the heavy duty plates with however many storage you want. All you're going to need to do is change the tier from tier 4 to tier 5, etc. to get that type of rocket. So I'm going to start with the heavy duty plates. Now to make tier 4 heavy duty plates, you need to take a tier 3 with a compressed carbon and use this by taking those carbon ingots I talked about before. And then uh, surrounding that by compressed mercury, which is the exact same uh, using those mercury ingots. To make the fins, you're going to need two titanium ingots, which are in the previous mods, and then those tier 4 heavy duty plates. To make the boosters, you're going to take compressed carbon, tier 4 heavy duty plates, oxygen vent, fuel canister, and an orange wool. And I went over how to make these different things in my previous mods, so go watch those. Uh, to make the tier 4 rocket engine, you need just the usual things of the button, flint and steel, tin canister, oxygen vent. So the only thing you're going to be changing throughout these tiers are the plating that's on the side. Then you have the nose cone, and it's the exact same as before. It's only going to be changing these tier 4 plates. You're going to just going to have that redstone torch up there at the top. And all these things put together will make that tier 4 rocket. So for tier 5, to make the plates, you're going to need that tier 4 plate and surround that by compressed palladium. Now to make that, it's just those two ingots in the compressor. And then as I said before, you're going to just be advancing the plates with whatever tier. So you're going to take those tier 4 plates for the fins, and then you're going to place the tier 5 plates there. For the boosters, you're going to change it to blue wool and then compressed palladium. For the engine, you're going to be changing those tier 5 plates, and for the nose cone, tier 5 plates. So you're eventually going to get the pattern that's going on here. For the tier 6 plates, you're going to take those tier 5 plates and surround it by compressed magnesium. And then to make the fins, you're just going to take the tier 5 and place the tier 6 there. For tier 6, you're going to need to place green or, or lime wool and compressed magnesium. And then for the engine, just those tier 6 plates and those cone the exact same way. And you put it in. And I do really like these neon colors that it adds in. And so then you're going to get the tier 6 rocket with such and however many uh, storage units you would like. For the tier 7, to make the tier 7 plates, you're going to need the tier 6 and surround it by compressed reinforced crystal. Now to make that, you're going to need compressed crystal, two of those, and to make that, you're going to need uh, crystal ingots, and those are what you find over here on uh, Uranus. So you can see the crystal ingots. And now to launch these rockets, you're going to need to place them on a tier 2 launch pad, not the uh, tier 1 that was in the previous mod. Now to make this, you're going to need three of those titanium ingots and three compressed titanium to get five of those. Now you're going to need to place these down in a 5x5 five five grid instead of a 3x3 three three because these are much larger rockets. Now moving on to the next set, we got our tier 8 rocket. Now to make that plate, you need to take the tier 7 and put zinc ingots in the compressor as such. And then it's all the usual things that I already talked about before, except with the boosters, you're going to need the red wool on top. And it's just all the usual things before. Then for the tier 9, you're going to need to take the tier 8 and add compressed tungsten uh, around it. And to make that, you just take the tungsten ingots and put it in the compressor. And then, as I said before, it's all the usual things, except the booster, you're going to want light blue wool. 
And now this cannot be any other type of wool, this has to be that color. And then same with the nose cone. And then finally for the tier 10 rocket, you're going to need to take that tier 9 and surround it by compressed dark iron, which is going to be a long way out into the solar system. And now to make that, you just take two of those dark iron ingots and you'll get one of those compressed ones. And then it's the same story before, except for this one, you're going to need uh, cyan wool, except, you know, it's a little weird because for some reason it's purple there, but it's, you know, this type of blue wool. So it's a little interesting, but this mod is constantly being updated and it's just all of the usual stuff. Now, for these, you're gonna to need to be placed on a, a tier three, these nine and 10. And to make a tier three, you're gonna need uh, three blocks of tungsten with three zinc ingots. And to make a block, it's just a bunch of the tungsten ingots. And then there's this last rocket, and it's a tier 10 electric rocket. And I'll get to that a little later. And it, that is extremely expensive to make. So I'll come to that in just a second. So this next chest I'm gonna go over uh, adds a few different types of rovers that you can ride around on the planets. Now first we have this Mars rover and this Venus rover as well. Now you're going to need to find these schematics uh, in the dungeons as I already talked about before. And I went over how to make this uh, tier 2 heavy duty plates before as well in the previous mods. Now to make this tier 1 battery all you're going to need to do is take uh, four of those heavy duty plates of tier 2 and then those lead ingots that I talked about before in an X pattern you'll get this tier 1 battery and you can also make it using these different types of uh, lead ingots. And now to make these tier 1 wheels you're going to need to take uh, four of those heavy duty plates and a buggy wheel and to make that it's just a compressed steel with leather surrounding it. And then for the Venus rover you're going to need to upgrade those to tier 4 heavy duty plates, tier 2 batteries, and tier 2 wheels. I already went over the tier 4 heavy duty plates to make the tier 2 battery. You're going to need to take uh, lead ingots, put them in X pattern, and fill the rest in with dash. And then you can also use this different type of lead as well. And then to make these tier 2 wheels, you're going to take the tier 1 wheel and surround it by dash ingots. Now, I already went over dash before uh, in the previous mod reviews as well. Same with the buggy seats and all that. So if you put it in the crafting table as such for the Venus rover and as such for the Mars rover, you will get those types of cars. Now, I will go over the Venus rover and now to run these or use these you're going to need a vehicle charging pad and to make this you're going to take uh, three blocks of dash and three dash ingots to get five of these and you're going to need to place this in a five by five grid and this last thing I'm going to go over are new types of batteries now previously a battery could only hold around 16,000 uh, inside it and so these add a little bit more power and that's very handy because before you had to carry it around just a ton of batteries we have this nickel battery, and to make it, you're going to take um, five compressed nickel with a redstone and coal, and it can hold 85,000. For a mercury, you're going to take compressed mercury with redstone and coal, holds 100,000. The zinc adds a 25,000, so 125,000 with just some zinc ingots. An advanced battery will take compressed titanium with a normal battery and a block of dash, and it holds 150,000. And a normal battery is just three compressed tin with a redstone coal for three of those. Then the ultimate battery will take a Neptune blue gem ore with a Neptune uh, red gem ore and a white gem ore with a block of carbon, magnesium, and palladium with an advanced battery and two tungsten, or a tungsten and a zinc, excuse me. And this will hold 200,000 uh, units of energy. And then finally we have the massive battery. And to make this, you're going to take two of those advanced batteries, a nether star, compressed palladium and compressed nickel and you'll get this which can hold 500,000 units of energy and uh, as you can see it is uh, raining a little bit. Let me fix that. So the next chest I'm going to go over in the side chest are the bits and gizmos basically. Just a bunch of random things. Starting off with uh, new dehydrated foods we have dehydrated fish you make it as such along with salmon, chicken, and pork chops. So it just adds a few uh, different versions of those as the uh, first mod had a few uh, different versions of dehydrated food as well. And then you have this caramel, uh, caramel, however you pronounce that, bar and this chocolate bar along with this white sugar cane. And I believe you can find all these things on Kepler-22b which I'll go over since that's a very special planet. Now you can't just make these uh, or just find them. You need to find the liquid of the liquid caramel and liquid chocolate and I'll go over uh, the machine that allows you to change those into those types of bars in just a second. Then we also have uh, this kind of list of things that you're gonna need to make this anti-radiation uh, potion. Now, you're gonna start off by finding potash, and now you find potash on Mercury, 
and then you have potassium and potassium iodide and then I'll show you uh, how you use these in the machine to finally make this anti-radiation potion which you're definitely uh, going to need if you don't have that strong of a spacesuit as it reduces radiation level by 50 percent. To make this you're also going to need this iodized salt and I'll go over that in just a second as well. And then we've got a few uh, different kind of tools here. We have the sledgehammer. To make this, you're going to need to take uh, three volcanic ingots with those uh, two meteoric irons, and then any type of those green, yellow, brown, whatever type of sticks that you want. And now to make a grinding wheel, you're going to take one of those sledgehammers, uh, ash shards, and volcanic ingots. And now to make these ash shards, you're going to take that sledgehammer with an ash block to get two of those. Now to make this filter, you're going to need a uh, wool cloth with this string mesh. To make wool cloth, you just need four pieces of wool. You'll get eight of these. And to make that string mesh, all you need to do is place a bunch of string in the crafting table. Now, you're going to use all these to make some machines, and I'll go over those in just a second. But you also have this uh, counter, and now this allows you to see what your current radiation level is. And as it says, it can be obtained from a mercury dungeon. Now we have some new types of TNT. We have a firebomb and a nuclear bomb. Now to make the firebomb, all you need to do is take some of that uranium ingots with sand, two ash shards, and a volcanic shard. And to make that, all you need to do is take volcanic ingots with a grinding wheel to get two of those. We're going to take that. And to make the nuclear bomb, all you need to do is take four gunpowder, four sand, and a uranium ingot. Take that along with a source of power. And now very quickly, these uh, things down here on the bottom, these do not have any uh, purposes right now. So maybe in a mod update, they'll eventually uh, add purposes to these, and they're definitely going to add a lot of things because there are new galaxies, as I'll show you in just a second, that they're going to uh, be adding to this mod. But let's go blow some stuff up first. So here we are. I'm going to start off with this uh, firebomb and set it down. Now this does not have a massive uh, explosion radius, but it does add to just well, a bunch of fire, as you can see. As usual, TNT uh, radius, but just much more fire. Now coming over here with this nuclear bomb, if I go ahead and set it down here, line it up. This is not as large as some of the uh, other mod nuclear TNT bombs, but it does make a pretty large explosion just for one of those uranium ingots uh, in place of gunpowder. So it's definitely worth it if you're wanting a bigger explosion. Now next in the side chest we have just a bunch of different blocks. This isn't really like going over that much. This is just things that you might find on the planets. Uh, on this grit, you're going to find on that uh, Kebler 22B, uh, and it's just, you know, cool blocks that you can use around. You'll find marble, because you cannot craft this at the moment. Then you have a bunch of different uh, kind of bricks, as I already went over, like the frozen nitrogen, and you got ice bricks, you make as such. Same with the fire bricks, you use volcanic rock, as I talked about before, with lava. Then you got this kind of interesting tile. You've got ash bricks, you take the ash blocks as such. Then you got this metal mesh, you take a palladium ingots. You got this black and white tiled floor, you take some ink sacs, some bone meal, and some mercury stone. And then you've got like carbon tiled floor, you take some carbon ingots, you've got carbon broken tiled floor, which is where you take four of those tiled floors and put them together. And then you got volcanic rock, you take, you know, volcanic rock to make those bricks. You got magnesium tiled floor, you take magnesium ingots, and then the broken, you make the same way as the carbon. And you've got cookie rocks, and now you just fill a crafting table with cookies. So kind of looks interesting, I guess. Then you've got just some uh, basic blocks you can use. Now you can't make this because as you can see it takes a white block to make a white block. So how do you make that white block? But uh, these I believe you can just find on planets or they'll eventually have a crafting recipe as this mod gets updated, which it is being updated very frequently. And you also have these weird blocks of white icing with several different colored dots that you can find out in the solar system. So just a whole assortment of colors colorful blocks that you can use or make or find or eventually will be added. Same with these different types of uh, candy canes that you'll find as well. So that's why it's just kind of side chest, just a bunch of blocks that you could find. But now we're going to move on to a very important part of this mod and that is the machines. Now starting up here at the top left we have just a bunch of the old machines uh, from the previous mods. I already went over these and I'm not going to waste your guys' time going over the recipes because they can get pretty complex as you're making multiple different machines. So just get the Just Enough Items mod which I've recommended before that just lets you make all these items with ease as it shows you the recipes. But on the top we have advanced versions of these machines and then the ultimate versions of these machines. And the only thing it really changes is the speed and quality of which the machines do their particular uh, actions. So it'll be more expensive, but things will happen faster. 
And that's kind of the same thing with these uh, hybrid solar panels here. To make the hybrid, all you need to do is take those advanced solar panels with compressed magnesium. To make the ultimate, you're going to take the hybrid and surround it by the compressed crystal. Now these just allow you to uh, have solar panels that work at night as well. And so the ultimate is the greater version of the hybrid, which just means that it's going to harvest more energy and it's going to harvest it faster. Now I'm going to move on to four different types of machines that will allow you to make that radiation protection potion. First we have this basic block smasher, we have this basic crystallizer, we have this basic solar evaporation chamber, and this chemical ejector. Uh, now we're going to take these different things, and now to make the basic block smasher you're going to need to take four compressed mercury, three pistons, two anvils. To make the crystallizer you're going to need four pistons, three compressed carbon, two blocks of mercury. To make the solar evaporation chamber you're going to need four basic solar panels, three compressed mercury, and two blocks of mercury. To make the basic chemical injector, you're going to need six uh, uranium ingots and three pistons. So if we start over here with the basic block smasher, if we go ahead and place my battery in there and place some potash in here, once the percentage goes all the way to 100, we'll get three potash shards. Go ahead and take my battery. Now if we go to the basic crystallizer and add some energy and we get this liquid crystallized water, now you can contain this fluid on Ceres and Europia. So if we go ahead and place this in there, once it crystallizes, we will then get some iodized salt, and we're going to need this as well. So our next machine I'm going over is the basic solar evaporation chamber. Now if we put some energy in here, and I've grabbed a few more potash shards, so you're gonna need to smash quite a few blocks, because you're gonna need 12 of them to make uh, one of these potassiums. And now that's basically all this machine is used for. Our next machine I'm going to go over is the chemical injector. Now if I add some energy here, and you're going to need six potassium and three iodized salt, and it will inject these together to make some potassium iodide. Now you're going to make um, need to make multiple of these in order to be able to make that radiation potion. Because to make this potion, you're going to need to add four of those with two compressed magnesium, a glass bottle, and clean water bucket. And I'll show you how to make clean water in just a second. It takes another machine. So I just grabbed a couple of other fluids we're going to need. We're going to need infected water, and you can obtain this fluid on mercury, and radioactive water, and you can obtain this on Ceres and Europia. Now, if we go ahead and take our basic purifier and just a bunch of iodized salt, which you're going to need, and we add a little bit of uh, energy, we place the infected water there, the radioactive water there, and our iodized salt here, it will start purifying this and making it uh, into clean water. And now once this uh, clean water, you know, it stacks up enough, you can place a bucket in there and it will gather up this clean water. And then you use this again as such in the recipe to make this anti-radiation potion. So that's basically what all these types of machines are. Those were four machines to make that one anti-radiation potion. Now two other machines we have, we have the vehicle charger. And to make this, you're gonna take uh, six dash and three batteries. And this you'll use with this uh, vehicle charging pad in order to be able to uh, use your uh, particular rovers. And then we have a basic decontamination unit and it reduces radi radiation level by 10%. Now to make this, it's pretty complex. You need two mercury batteries, two iodized salt, two volcanic ingots, two lapis lazuli blocks, so there's another purpose for that, and a filter. So we're going to go ahead and take both these, and I'm going to talk about this de decontamination unit first. Now this is a massive unit. Now if we go ahead and just place some power in there, all we have to do then is walk into this. So once it has a bunch of power, which it will eventually get up to, it needs one, it needs one million uh, energy units. So once this completely fills up, we will then be able to clean ourselves of any radiation that we might have on us. So there it is, it's complete. So if I walk in here, as it says, I have currently no radiation. And as you can see, that message will keep popping up because it will continue to clean me off. And this model does look very cool as well. It looks very spacey. And now we're going to move on to these vehicle charging pads or basically just this rover so I can show you how it works. So if we go ahead and set this down in a 5x5 five five grid, since it is a much larger uh, prototype than the previous one, let's hit down as such. Then you'll know it's complete when this little square appears in the center, and we go ahead and set this down. Now this is a little buggy, as it doesn't really have a pilot seat for you to be in, and you can't really see how much energy you have left, so it's a little weird. 
but and place this machine down and just add some energy it will start loading into this machine so as i said before it doesn't say how much energy you have in it and in fact you can't really see out of it that much unless you go into a different uh, perspective but it is a very large machine and it does go very fast now it will only charge when you're on this particular platform that i'm on and when it's out of energy well it'll be out of energy so as you can see, it flies around and it will jump over certain gaps. And as I said before, it's a little buggy. So as you can see, I'm kind of sliding out the front. But it is very useful for flying around planets because in the low gravity, it is very difficult to move. And every once in a while, you are going to need to come back and recharge it. So hopefully they fix those uh, bugs. Now the last thing to go over before we take off into space and see the new map and all that are the space suits. Now first we have the thermal suit and now we have the five different tiers. And now the first tier is added in the basic Lackcraft mod. And to make the basic thermal cloth, all you need is take any color wool, trying to buy redstone, and then to make that thermal tier, all you do is place it in the usual armor slot. Now to make tier two, you're gonna need to take two of those thermal cloths with a dash ingot. And to make it uh, for the tier two, it's the exact same thing. You're just gonna place it in the armor slot. But for tier three, it's gonna be a little different. To make the tier three cloth, you're gonna to to take five of those tier one with a compressed dash. And now when you're making the armor in the empty slots, you're gonna be placing a compressed dash there as such. For tier four, you're gonna take uh, five of those thermal cloths with a compressed carbon. And it's gonna be the exact same, except you're using compressed carbon now in the empty slots as such. And finally, you have the tier five thermal cloth, and then it's gonna be the same with the thermal cloth around it, except you're using compressed magnesium in all of those empty slots as well. Now for, depending on, well, depending on how far out you go, how hot it is on the planet, how cold it is, you're going to need this armor. So I recommend as soon as you can, just get the highest armor for wherever you're going, and then you won't have to worry about any temperature uh, at all. And next we're moving on to spacesuits. Now this looks very complex, but it is fairly easy to understand. So I'm gonna start off by saying that there are four different types of tiers of armor layer, radiation layer, and pressure layer. Now to make tier one, all you're gonna need to do is take oxygen concentrators and wool cloth for pressure. For radiation, you're gonna to need to take six of either type of lead with three cloth. And for armor, you're going to need four aluminum ingots as such. And to make tier two of armor, you're gonna use titanium ingots instead. For tier two of radiation, you're gonna take those lead ingots with two wool and that tier one radiation in the center. And then for tier two pressure, it's the exact same, except you have the tier one pressure in the center. And then for tier three, it's the exact same, but you have the tier two. And then for the other tier three, it's the same. And then for the armor, you're gonna need palladium ingots instead. And then it's the exact same for the tier four, you place tier three in the center, surrounded by the same stuff as usual. But with the tier four armor, you're gonna to need to use zinc ingots. And now we have a very special type of boots. It's called no fall damage module. And you're gonna take some raw silicon and some titanium boots. And then that will just well, make you take no fall damage wherever you are. And then we have a gravity controller, which you're gonna use later for a special type of space boots. And to make it, you're gonna to need to take uh, four advanced wafers, a meter iron ingot, and four batteries. And you're gonna use these in just a second. Now going on to the main space suit armor. The first thing you're going to need to do is make tier one unprepared space suit uh, outline, basically. And so all you're gonna do is take aluminum and place it in the usual armor slots. Now to make tier one space suit, all you're gonna do is take that tier one unprepared and surround it by tier one radiation on the left, tier one pressure on the right, and two armor on top and bottom. And then for the space helmet, you're just gonna place the helmet in that same outline, same with legs and the boots. Now this will only give you a certain amount of radiation and pressure protection. So each layer, as it says right here, will add up to protect more radiation and more pressure. So you cannot go out extremely far without better armor or be out in open space. And now it does have an energy meter there, as you can see the zero to 50,000. Now I have not been able to find anywhere online or just try testing it myself to be able to charge this, but the suit will work without charging it. So eventually they're gonna add to where you can charge it or whatever, but for right now you don't need to, it will still work and you can't. 
And as it also says, it supports the following power systems. And as you can see, it, those are different mods. As you can see, the IC2, that's Industrial Craft 2, which is a massive mod, which I might go over later. But you're going to need uh, better suits the further out you go. Now, to make a Tier 2 space suit, you're going to need to take Tier 2 unprepared space helmet. Now, to make this, you're going to take that Tier 1 and place it in the empty slots and surround it with titanium ingots in the usual crafting uh, or armor crafting recipes that you would use, as you can see there. And then for the Tier 2, you're going to place that and surround it in the same way, except you're using Tier 2 radiation uh, pressure and the armor. Then it's the exact same for Tier 3. You're going to take that Tier 2 unprepared, surrounded by Palladium in the exact same way as I went over before. And then to make the Tier 3 space suit, place the Tier 3 there with the Tier 3 radiation, pressure, and armor. And finally, Tier 4 is the exact same. Take Tier 3, but you're using Zinc ingots instead. And then to make the Tier 4 space suit, you're going to take the final Tier 4, surrounded by that, and you will get the Tier 4 space suit. Now with this, you can go anywhere and do whatever, and this is the best armor you can get unless the, you know they add some more in a different mod. And now we have a couple, uh, the Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, and Tier 4 special armor that you can use of the Jetpack Chestplate, and then we also have Gravity Boots. Now to make the chest plate for the jetpack, all you need to do is take two heavy rocket engines with six batteries and you'll get the tier one. And to make the tier two, you're gonna take tier four rocket engines with the tier two, same batteries. For this tier three, you're gonna take tier six and the tier three spacesuit with the batteries. And for the tier four, you're gonna take tier eight rocket engines with the batteries and the tier four suit. And now this, when you press space, and I'll show this later when we're in space, when you press space, you will then fly up a decent height. And now you need to be careful because you will take fall damage even if you come down slowly because there is low gravity. And now if it adds up over time, that can kill you even though it doesn't look like it will. So don't. So be careful using it because you can die unless you have like these no fall damage boots. Then next we have these space uh, gravity boots. And to make this, you're going to take the Tier 1 Space Boots and just surround it by Gravity Controllers. And it's the exact same for all tiers, only upgrading the Tier Boots that are in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a set of armor, the highest set, of course, the Space Suit and the Space Boots. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a Tier 10 Rocket and the Tier 3 launch pad that we're going to use it on. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up, and then we're going to go into space. So I have my rocket set up, but right before I take off, I want to talk about this electronic rocket. Now, this is just basically a Tier 10 version of the rocket, but it's powered, meaning that you're not going to do the usual fuel loading that I've gone over before. It's the same with all different tiers. Uh, but I also do recommend that you get the uh, better fuel tier loading uh, machines because these will take longer to load so if you have the ultimate loading machine it will just take a few seconds compared to several minutes if you have like a you know, very basic loading fuel loading machine now this electronic rocket it's going to take that vehicle charger that I talked about before with these powered rocket launch pads and to make these you're going to take three compressed platinum with three platinum ingots to get five of these you're going to need to set this in a five by five grid as well and now this will have the same fuel type of GUI, except it will be electricity. Now to make this, it is ridiculously expensive because you're going to need uh, eight platinum compressed platinum plates, a tier 10 nose cone, tier 10 rocket fins, those two tier two batteries. But you're going to need two tier 10 rockets by themselves, taking up a place where these compressed platinums would be. So as you can see, it is ridiculously expensive, but it is much easier uh, to charge and use multiple times because getting fuels over and over and over for these powerful rockets, uh, that will take a lot of time and a lot of oil as I've gone over before in my previous mod reviews. But we have behind me the amazing tier 10 rocket, which is a monster and makes a tier one look that just like a pathetic little thing. And now this has an amazing GUI model. And if we go ahead and right click, as you can see, it has all the usual controls on the side. It has the 20 second countdown. And now when you first place it down, it will have a pre-launch checklist and you should click on that. Make sure you have everything because if you do not, well, you're going to kind of be screwed when you're coming down onto any planet. So I'm going to go ahead now and hit the space bar. So as it says, if I don't have parachute, if I press launch again, there's no going back, but I do have a full kit on me. 
And so I'm gonna go ahead and place this on right now. So if I right click, all the gear is gonna be placed on me. You can see all the cool effects that are happening around my character. And I'm gonna go over that armor and stuff later in just a second. Now, to let you know, these kits do not have these spacesuits. They only have those thermal protection suits. So you are going to need a set of, the, of whatever tier spacesuit for wherever you're going. So I'm now gonna go ahead and press launch. It's gonna do its usual 20 second sequence that we've gone through before and then we'll be off into space. And also, uh, Pig is unfortunately burning behind the rocket because, well, it's setting everything on fire next to it. And now, it's the usual amazing stuff that this mod has. It will eventually show the Earth right beneath us as the land goes away, there it is, and the beautiful night sky that we are now entering. And also, on the side, you can see the uh, progress meter up into space before we hit our galactica map and there we go we have our map now now this is slightly different than the map beforehand because as i talked about it adds a few different places that you can go to now these particular places you cannot add them or go to them yet but you can go to this one over here this kepler 22b which is the very special planet these will be added later along with new galaxies as you can see in those purple text if we click this we have four different galaxies we have the milky way which we are in we have the Proxima Centauri, and this is just like a very cool uh, Star Wars reference, and I can't wait for it to be in. We have the Whirlpool, which adds uh, just a few different moons, and then we have the Black Eye, which adds a few different as well. But we can only go to the stuff in the, the Milky Way right now. And now, besides for Kepler 22b and Pluto and Eris, we cannot go to these other things over here, Make Make, uh, Humia, if that's how you pronounce it, and the Cooper Belt. Uh, those will be added later, same with these. As you can see, it says Tier Unknown, and we can't launch to it. Uh, so if we go ahead, and I'm just going to click on like Saturn to give you an example. Now, on all these places, you can make space stations if you have the required uh, materials that it says here. And so I'll put a link in the description that will allow you to look these up so it's much easier so you don't have to fly up and then go back down. And then also, whenever you click on a planet over on the left side, it will show the different moons pop up that are underneath that planet. Now this GUI is a little glitchy because all the information of, you know, if it has a dungeon, the meteor frequency, gravity, all that stuff, and the day length, it does block up the solar system, so it is kind of hard because if I were to click on, like, Venus and zoom in, this is going to be blocking my picture of Venus and its moons. So it, it's a little annoying if it could, like, compress down to a smaller window, that would be nice. But uh, for right now, the very special planet I want to go to is this Kepler 22b. And as you can see, you can make a space station here for an insane amount of diamonds that are on this planet. So it is very expensive. It takes a tier 10 rocket. So let's go ahead and press launch. And now this is a very beautiful planet. As you can see, my parachute has opened and it'll take a little while for us to fall down. And there we go, it's starting to appear right there. So as you can see, it is a multitude of colors. You got white, red, purple, blue, green, orange, all the stuff. And you also have a few things of black and white, which weren't in the color uh, biomes that I showed in the chest. Those are made up of very special uh, different ores that you can find on other planets as well. So it just puts a bunch of ores all together on this planet. So if we can go ahead and eventually hit the ground here. There we go. Now as you can see, we have all different colors grass, depending on the biomes you're in. You can find all the different colored things underground as I talked about before. You can find blue diamonds everywhere. Now these are not diamonds, these are the blue diamonds. So even though they might look just amazing, uh, they're the blue diamonds, not normal diamonds. It has slightly reduced gravity as you can see of me bouncing around. Now if I go over and find, here's a black biome. This is a coal grit that I'm standing on right here and these are coal trees. Uh, same thing over here with uh, the white biome. This is iron. Now this is iron grit that we're on that I talked about before in that kind of side chest and we have iron trees with iron blocks on top. But this planet also has uh, similar creatures uh, that are on earth. You'll find cows and pigs here. And to get back home, well, you are going to need your rocket. And as I talked about before, wherever you did land, eventually a parachute will fall in behind you. Mine was up on this tree where it landed. And this will have your tier 10 rocket with your launch pads and any extra fuel that you have that you'll need to place in with an empty canister to get back. So I'm going to go ahead and set up another rocket and go to one more world. Here we go, rocket set up. I'm going to go ahead and launch off again. And I'm going to head to the asteroids just to show you what it's like out being out in space. 
and also to give you a little preparation because the asteroids can be a little tricky and they're a great place to show the spacesuit and the gravity boots so i'll see you there in just a second here we are back in the map and i'm gonna go ahead and click on the asteroids now this only takes a tier 3 rocket uh, and as you can see, all this uh, information does not have a dungeon. You cannot make a space station on it, but we're going to go ahead and launch to them. I am first going to be, uh, well, I'm not going to be taking any damage right now because, well, I'm in creative mode. But if you go to survival mode right now and you're not on, or you don't have uh, your spacesuit on, you will be in some trouble. Now, you will come down in this nice little pod uh, so you don't die or take any fall damage. So I'll go ahead and eject right here. And I'll place uh, the spacesuit on right now. And so I'm gonna go over to game mode uh, zero. And as you can see, I am, uh, well, not taking any damage because if there is any amount or if I'm not even completely protected from the pressure or radiation, you will take damage extremely quickly. So you do not have a bunch of time to put armor on once you land. Now this will contain your usual rocket and your launch pad. And now you have these ice surrounded comets and you have just regular asteroids. Now this, these asteroids have a highly reduced gravity. And as you can see inside, they also have high environmental pressure. So now's a good time for me to place on this space suit jet pad. Now, you, now this does not work right now because you need to charge it. Now with this normal suit stuff, you do not need to charge. As you can see, I'm staying alive just fine. But this suit jet pack, you do need to charge, and since you can't charge, unfortunately, you cannot use it right now. So you are going to need to use a creative uh, version of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those. And there we go, we have a fully charged uh, jet pack suit. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back in survive mode and put this on. And now if I press space, it will use a little bit of charge and launch me very high up, especially since there is low gravity. And as you can see, it's only using around uh, uh, 20,000 per charge and now when you land back down don't take uh, it depends on the gravity uh, it depends on how much uh, fall damage you'll take since this is a very low gravity and not taking that much fall damage at all uh, hopefully there aren't any bugs because I do remember that before uh, fall damage could glitch out and you could take it when you shouldn't have so hopefully they'll fix that uh, as well but it just allows you to spam space and shoot up and fly around it's also very important on the asteroids because if you fall off, you will fall down into the void. It only goes on uh, just around you like this. It does not go up or down anymore. Also these uh, very cool blocks flying around. They're very hard to see just because of how dark it is around us. But finally, we have these uh, space gravity boots. Now these do not require any charge, unlike the jet pack. If I go ahead and place these on, whatever gravity level it was before, it goes away. Now, as you can see, I'm falling down much faster than I was before because it has normal gravity. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that off. So you can see that I'm jumping normally like I would if it was on the overworld and I'm falling normally. So you can see this very cool spacesuit that I'm wearing and the thermal armor effect of that uh, shield that's going on around it. And well, that's pretty much it for this ultimate extra planets mod. And I just touched a few of the biomes or extra planets you can go to, but there are so many more, so many space stations and stuff to create and all that you can explore on your own. It's very fun. And I didn't want to spoil uh, a bunch of the planets just because exploring those one time, as I said in the beginning, is uh, very special and you can only do it once. But thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a like and comment down below any other types of mods you'd like me to review. And I'll see you all in the next video. High five.